pushed on in the second half. Neil McCauley stretched the lead with this wonderful individual effort from the halfway line. The awfully fight back just wasn't coming and then a big setback. They were reduced to 14 men. Derek Malloy sent off for a second yellow. It spurred them on as Antrim sat back on their four-point lead. Shane Dooley was almost pulling them back into the contest single-handedly. But Kevin Brady chipped in two with this point. Antrim led by a point going into the closing stages. And Scullion should have sealed their passage. James Dempsey, though, denied them a certain goal. It was a moment of controversy. Just moments later, the three minutes of additional time were up when Antrim conceded this sloppy free. He presented young Shane Dooley with a chance to save their blushes. He shrugged off the pressure and drilled it between the posts. The moment caused a lot of debate on the sideline at the final whistle. Extra time then, and there would be no repeat of 89. Offaly's superior fitness began to tell, and Gary Hanafy's goal ended Antrim's Leinster Championship. They ran out 226 to 316 winners. We felt that we should have won the game or could have won the game. But when it went to extra time, I don't think we had the legs really to stay, stay with Offaly lads. But fair credit uh, due to Offaly Long. They persisted with the, with the game and their game plan, and maybe they deserved to win at the end. In fairness to the lads, you know, they showed great character to get back into it. and. You know, that la the, the last free to level it in was a real pressure puck because it was the last puck of the game, you know, so. That's your son Shane who stood over that one, a yeah. difficult moment for such a young man. Yeah, it was indeed RH, yeah, he just closed my eyes and hoped for the best and uh, it's fair play to him, he put it over, you know, it was a real pressure free, so kept us in the championship really, you know. OK, nearly a massive shock there, Cyril. You were telling me earlier you weren't that surprised. Yeah, well, awfully I thought we were going well because I'd seen him in Challenger, but I met Danny Cahill two weeks ago, which was a club game in Galway, and he was telling me that they were playing, contrary to reports, they were playing very, very well, and he said he had forwards, five or six, that could actually score, like, and he was expecting a mm. big, big game from them. And, like, you know, you would feel there that awfully got out of jail. And, uh, you know, they will improve from that type, but they'll be delighted that they got out of it because, like, they were down to 14 men and they, they came uh, at the end to get out, you know, yeah. the last score from a free that if the, if the Antrimonian didn't dive in, it was hardly a free at all. So, like, it was just, you know, th this, these things can happen in championship. That's what makes it a great game. It's the little teams, though, it's so small things. They didn't get the goal and they gave away that softish free if it was a free, Paul. Yeah, it's just, uh, it always seems that when you're trying to make the breakthroughs, the little things that, yeah. that trip you up, particularly, you know, Antrim seemed to be cruising there with 10 minutes to go, yeah. but... You'd have to give some bit of credit to Offaly, in fairness, a man down got it back to a draw. And of course, they could play 15 men in the extra time. And, uh, you know, it was a great goal there in the end for yeah. Offaly, the little flick inside. And, yeah. uh, you know, a different day against Galway now. They'll, you know, they'll regroup and go back. And, um, you know, they'll have nothing to lose. They'll be a flip from today, like they, they were sure. favourites today. And the next day now, they'll have a, a free run at having a good goal. All right, then. Well, time to reflect on last night's big game now at Nolan Park, where the league's Division 2 champions, Wexford, took on the Division 1 champions, Galway. Our commentary team here, Donal O'Grady and Jer Canning. With difficulty, they get it forward towards Owen Quigley. It's well blocked down, a combination of Galway backs. But back once again come Wexford. Colin Farrell trying to set up an opportunity. It's cut out by David Collins. David Collins swinging into the centre to Jar Farrell. Standing all alone to measure this one. Down towards Joe Canning. Again, they isolate him one and one in so far as they possibly can. And Canning with his first scoring opportunity puts it over the bar. And the teams are level. That perfect ball out of the middle of the field by Jer Farrer, picking out Jer Joe Canning there in splendid isolation. Back down there once more to Damien Hayes. This time swung around, wrestled to the ground by David Redmond. Well, I think the yellow card might be coming here, deliberate foul, because he made no attempt to stop the player legitimately. And again, I just spoke a few seconds ago about, um, you know, giving away a needless freeze. I mean, this is a cast iron pie enough with Jer Farrer coming up, no need for it. And uh, Colin Bonner will be well aware of what Donald is saying here, not to give away stupid freeze like that. Oh, with Joe Farrer around, and he's put that one over once again. Deadly accurate. That's batted out again by Tony O'Gregan. There's simply no getting through that Galway half back line. The Wexford half forward line hasn't really made much of an impression so far. Joe Canning always makes an impression. He's gone way out there. Strikes it, but strikes it wide. And Galway's wide's tally, eight against four for Wexford. That's a great catch by Dear 
middling. That is one of the scores of the match so far. This was a superb catch with the right hand, then made in Rhodes, set off with determination and accuracy. Yeah, that's only the fifth uh, Pakota went to the one with a great catch and then they needed that score badly. Darren Stamp feeding it ahead cleverly to Mick Jacob. Inside it goes here. Again, out to David Collins, getting a lot of possession. Nicely on as far as Damien Hayes, had to work for that. To Ger Faraher, swinging at it instinctively and putting it right between the posts. A lovely score for Galway. Another super point. Seven for Ger Faraher, and the gap is three again. Eight points to five. Well, Ger Damien Hayes has moved out to the uh, 40 and uh, operating almost as a third midfielder, and Joe Canning is operating out there as well, leaving Joe Gantley and Aidan Hart inside. What about this for a display at left half back by David Collins, the man who damaged his ankle badly in an interprovincial match at Croke Park at the end of 2007. Here he is again, this time leaving it for Tony O'Regan. What a combination at half back. A little slip inside there, and Hart's out for it. Goalkeeper's out, and it's gone wide. Great chance of the opening goal of the match. Well, a good ball played in, and uh, Wexford slipped up there, and um, Eden Hart just clipped it. As anticipated, Galway are leading. Wexford still fighting but chasing. And looking for possession right now. And it's Darren Stamp who was caught as he kicked that ball away. And caught there by Andy Smith. And the referee is going to have words with uh, Galway's number 12 for that. He's already taken one yellow card. The name, or given one yellow card, the name of David Redmond. On the Wexford team. And now it's Andy Smith in hot water oh, it's ended up now with David Burke and more particularly with Joe Farraher his midfield partner Joe Canning trying to keep it in very dangerous one just a little prod needed and he could have hooked it in over the goalkeeper had come out for it and Keith Rossiter with a bemused look on his face referee has blown his whistle and it's going to be a free so a free from the 20 meter line they know what to expect it's struck now and it's in the back of the net Joe Canning strikes decisively just before half time well Noel Carter made a great effort here to block it but it just went into the net <laughs> Damien Hayes now inside towards Canning again already you could see Gantley was on the move waiting for a knockdown didn't come but it comes to Andy Smith nobody near him and he places it beautifully between the posts from the angle shot and over for his first point of this match well great perseverance by Joe Canning there and knocked it out to Andy Smith and he could have maybe had a run in at it and maybe a goal chance there but takes a sensible option it's beautifully caught here by Ling needs to keep Wexford moving the whole time from the half forward line needs to get more out of that sector inside to Quigley this time Quigley with the chance and Quigley has put this one over great move up towards Canning breaks away difficult one for Hart Canning can take it misses it this time inexplicably I think he was thinking about the goal missed it and he was hooked brilliantly and out comes Keith Rossiter Rossiter with a little hand pass led off for Wexford big cheer from the crowd as Harry Kiao drops it away down inside it was Mick Jacob runs on to Rory Jacob oh what a save by Colin Gallagher one of the saves of the season might have been a goal for Joe Canning at one end might have been a goal for Wexford at the other it was left there for Rory Jacob look at this for goalkeeping Callanan superb held there by Joe Gantley haven't seen an awful lot of him in this match great play by Colin Farrell and the referee will step in immediately um, the problem is here I think that um, you know Andy Smith I think is in the yellow already watch it here now he is He's yeah. been sent off. A red card. I didn't see a second red there, did you? Or second yellow there, did you? Well, well, it's it a, straight, to be a red. straight red. It um, is a straight red. Number 17 is Barry Kenny from Buffers Alley. Wow. 
and uh, he may well be a blood, blood sub for a while as Jim 